Hello YouTube, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about boot time scans as asked, and I'm also going to get into malware. Um, so as I was asked to talk about boot time scans because we're talking about a VAST which offers a boot time scan feature. How does it work? Why does it work? What does it do? Um, a boot time scan is very important. Um, the reason is because a lot of different files within your system can get infected or corrupted. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say a virus comes in, okay, and it decides it wants to infect your your whole .NET framework, okay. And so, in order to do that, and you're let's say you're using your .NET framework at the time, right? Um, the system will reboot. It'll suddenly reboot the system, and while it's rebooting back up, it's going to replace the corrupted virus file and take out the actual .NET Framework update or whatever version it is. So let's say it takes that out and it puts in in its place the same .NET, work, .NET work Framework but with a virus in it or something like that. And maybe the .NET work Framework is not a good example. Let, let's take a driver from NVIDIA. And so inside the driver, the system reboots so it can do this to the driver or maybe it doesn't. Maybe, the, maybe it just goes into low graphic mode as the uh, driver is getting updated with the fake one. Same thing happens with Flash, Java, lots of different programs we use. So what it needs to do in order to put that virus in there is it needs to reboot the system. And so this idea I'm trying to get across to you is you can't do serious scans on parts of the operating system and you can't do serious checks and you know you can't really imagine you stuck in a module pretend this is the, the dotnet framework you need to pull out that module to put something underneath it to hide it so that's why the operating system needs to reboot um, in order to do this and the same time that's why a boot time scan is important because a boot time scan basically asks your computer to put itself into low dos emulation mode so it can pick up the .NET framework and look under it without taking out the system. And when it looks under the other rock for the driver, you might not have your system go off, but it's going to totally go low graphic mode for a minute. You probably wouldn't even notice it as the average user. I mean, you would notice it, but you wouldn't notice it's a virus coming in the door. And this is what kind of happens with a lot of drive-by downloading, which basically means you're downloading without knowing. Um, so the idea behind a boot time scan is because you can't scan all these parts or look under that rock unless you're not using that rock. So a boot time scan allows you to put all those rocks down and have a VAST come in and scan them again. Because lots of the time, malware can hide itself, encrypt itself, and do lots of crazy stuff, move where it is. And, and that's why it's so tough for you know antivirus makers like a VAST, like AVG, to really be good at what they're doing. And, you know, that's why I like Linux personally, it's because I just don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. And I can do everything on my Linux system that you could do on your Windows system. And, you know, except for running applications that are only made for Windows, of course. Like, I mean, some of them we can run in line, but for the most part, I'm not going to argue that. But Linux is not for everyone. And I think that is really the best um, protection against viruses and malware. But boot time scans are great. It's the same thing with like a mem test or something. You need to test all your memory, so the system needs to be rebooted um, in order to test every bit of memory, because you can't test a bit of memory if your system's using it. And it's the same thing with everything. You can't scan every single thing inside of your OS unless it's put into a low DOS emulation mode. I shouldn't say emulation, that's kind of the wrong word, but into a low DOS mode, because DOS is what is the, underneath the whole framework of your Windows OS. Um, so it's it's really important to know that you know you can't scan all that stuff. Oftentimes, what I would do um, when I would get infected computers, if I had a laptop, this is the best thing I found to do, and it was the quickest. I would just remove the guy's hard drive out of the laptop, and then I would plug it into my uh, Windows Seven system uh, that's for this, and I would scan it with every tool I had. The first tool I always use is Malwarebytes. I'm serious. And the reason I don't jump for things that are tougher like combo fix is because combo fix can wipe out your whole system because often, this is often what happens when I fix people's computers, not like all the time, but maybe 10% of the time, very low percentage. When I fix someone's computer, sometimes I'll take out a critical system file which will destroy the operating system or make me have to, you know, just replace the file until it works again. And people don't understand that oftentimes, you know, when you take out 
a virus that took out a critical part of the system, you might not be able to use that OS again. You might have to reinstall. But I used to always try to go the extra mile not to just be a restall whiz, you know, who just restalls everything to fix it. Um, I'd rather be somebody who's actually fixing the problem. So I used to run a bunch of scanners, and I used to do it one by one because some scanners are a little tougher, like combo fix. They'll actually rip things right out of the system that are important. So I would start first. Usually now it's a little different what I do. Actually now I'll use something called Process Explorer that's from Microsoft, and I'll actually look at all the stuff that's on the system and see if it's verified. And that, that gives me a faster way of actually looking if all the bloatware and junk they put on is actually malware or not. I can see if it's actually verified or if it's something malicious. So that's the first thing I do. Distinguish, because you know how customers, I don't know if you work with customers, you might, you might not. Uh, a lot of customers just have like tons of crap on the computer and I'm constantly having to go, do you know what this is? Okay, can I remove it? Thank you. Do you know what this is? Okay, can I remove that? Okay, do you know what this is? Uh, yeah, but I don't use it. You know, you get all these and you go through it really slowly. So now what I do is I just open Process Explorer and I just verify everything. And they're not going to have anything that's not verified. And so I check everything with Process Explorer and, and I'm not going to get into that. Maybe I'll do a video on Process Explorer for you guys. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see that. But the thing is, that's the first thing I do. And then after that, I'll run Malwarebyte Scan. And then I'll put the computer in safe mode. And I'll run that same Malwarebyte Scan again. And I'll kid even more. Because just like we just explained that when you put your computer, when you tell your computer not to use certain parts of the operating system, you can scan it better. Well, a lot of times when you get a driver infection, Java flash infection, something like that, uh, they're hiding in Java or they're hiding in your driver. And so the only way you can see them is to not boot up your driver. Like, putting your computer in safe mode. So you put your computer in safe mode, only the core um, utilities and applications and services start. So once you do that, you can just actually um, get a better look at them with the virus scanners. And usually after running uh, an AM, which is an anti-malware like uh, Malwarebytes is, because it's not an AV, it's an AM, even though it does kind of the same thing, it's an AM. So uh, something that's an antivirus or an AV like uh, Avast or uh, Kaspersky or Nod32, anything like that. I usually use that after. Um, the number one antivirus I've been using actually has been Microsoft Security Essentials, and now I don't use it anymore because I hate it. Uh, I just use Avast. So that would be the tool I would use to scan. After that, uh, I would reboot the system back into full mode. Um, well, first, like I said, I would scan the drives, right? I would slave them. So I'd remove the drive from the, the computer, plug it into another computer, scan it with Avast, scan it with Malwarebytes, then I'd plug it back into the system, then I would put it into safe mode, just to be clear. And then after I put it in safe mode, I'd put it in the regular mode, and I would scan it again with all those tools once again, and that way I could determine if it was free of viruses. Now, if it wasn't free of viruses, then I would bring in a tool like Combo Fix, and I would scan the crap out of it. And Combo Fix is dangerous, so you got to know what you're doing with it, and you got to know where to get it. If you want to use Combo Fix, ask me about it, and I'll tell you, because that's not what this video is about. So that's why boot time scans are really important. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Tell me what you guys think. Rate and subscribe. And uh, if you want to see more, uh, the more uh, positivity I see encourages me to do more videos. And lately I've been seeing a lot of that. So that's why you guys have been getting so many. So um, I really appreciate your guys' time and thank you for watching.